So here I have the utility knife. And at this point in time, I have everything designed except for the slot for this button that I'm going to be able to use to actually actuate the, the blade. So I have this thing, it already has a joint, so I can actually drag the button forwards or backwards and see the blade retract or come out, right? But I want to make sure that I have a slot inside of my housing so that the button actually is going to work. So what I could do at this point is let's go revert to the last position, and here I have the button in this position. We're going to go and create a sketch. And in this case, I'm actually going to use the surface of the button as my sketch plane. But I could really use anything I want. So I'm going to go and create a sketch. Uh, actually, no. We're going to go and use, mm, let's go to our origin. Let's go and use one of our main planes here. So we're going to go and use the YZ plane. I'm going to right click and create a sketch. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to project the geometry of the button. So we're going to say create, project. And I'm going to go and choose not the whole body, but rather I want to choose specific entities. And to make it easier, I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to choose the outer diameter of this particular button. And I'm going to say OK. Perfect. We'll finish that sketch. Now I can actually move this button, you know, move the entire blade forward. And notice that the sketch that I created doesn't move. The sketch actually stays where it was because that sketch was created with the position of the button in mind, right? The capture was already taken into account. So now what I could do is we're going to go and create another sketch. I moved my, my blade out right to its maximum position. We're going to go and create another sketch here. Oh, I got that warning. And here's what this warning is telling me. It's saying, I moved the component. Do you want to capture the current position or do you actually want to cancel the current position? And continue is really cancel in this case. So if I hit continue, it will revert back to the original button position. But actually, I want to capture it. So I'm going to go and choose capture. Now, we're going to do the same process again. This time I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut P for project. I'm again going to go and choose this outer edge of the button. And I'm going to go and say, OK. So at this point, let's go and take a look what we have here. We have a sketch showing the original position. It's a little hard to see, but we can actually make that work a little bit better for us. Let's go and hide some aspects of our components, just like that. So there we go. So we have two sketches, one with the button in the rear position and one with the button in the front position. Cool. Now. I'm going to go and create a third sketch. Now that's a choice. I could actually do all of this in that second sketch. That would be perfectly fine. I like to do it in a third sketch. That's my preference. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to name these sketches. And this one's going to be called button in rear position. And then this one's going to be called button, I got to spell correctly, button in front position. Perfect. Now we're going to go and make a new sketch going to create that. And I could actually project this geometry, the one from the rear position and the one from the front position. And I could hide the original sketches as well. So now I have both positions in a single sketch. That's the way I like to do it. And now what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to connect them together. And there are, of course, there are a variety of ways that I could do this. But I'm going to do this as simple as possible. I'm going to use L for line. I'm going to draw a line from this circle to this circle. And I'm going to then do the same thing again from here to here. Now, I actually did this on purpose. I drew the line like kind of in a weird spot. I did not draw the line near the top or the bottom. I'll show you why in a second. I want you to get more tips than just the main, you know, the title of this particular live, uh, live stream. So what I'm doing here is I'm intentionally drawing it a little cockeyed so that I can use a constraint, the tangent constraint, and then lock this in. And this looks nice and clean. If I wanted to, however, I could actually do that a little differently. So I'm going to do it differently for the bottom. I'm going to click kind of near the very bottom of the circle. 
and then I'm going to click kind of near the bottom of this one. And this one actually shows me a very small blue icon that tells me that if I snap it to this circle, it's actually going to automatically add the tangent constraint. So now that I have this circle here, I can go back and show my other components. Let's go and show everything. Perfect. And I could use this geometry and extrude right through my part. So we're going to go, actually we'll hide uh, the rock side. We'll go and grab this geometry. We're going to go and grab this one as well and this one. And now I can go and do an extrude cut and we're going to extrude cut just through the right side here. So I'm going to say cut all the way through and for the object to cut we're going to go with the, I guess the left side actually is what it's called. And there you have it. And now I can actually go and move this blade frontwards or backwards. It's going to give me the full motion the entire time. And as you could tell, this slot is perfectly spaced and perfectly oriented and perfectly sized.